Hello, good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this presentation on the energy efficient uh, residential and commercial heat pumps for renovation buildings with low GWP HFO refrigerants. A quite complex text, um, but short story is we are talking about decarbonization of heating. And um, I would like to take you with me on a tour um, how to achieve energy efficient solutions while using A2L refrigerants in renovation business. Well, what is the environment? Europe's choice renewed um, green deal target, so reduction of CO2 emissions. Um, buildings, heating and cooling using around 40% of EU total uh, consumption in of energy. Heat pumps play a key role, no doubt about that. So we need to bring heat pumps instead of fossil fuel boilers into the buildings to reduce uh, CO2 emissions. And air to water heat pumps are yeah, mainstream, the most growing um, type of heat pumps and require to efficiently operate even as um, extreme conditions at low ambient temperatures. For building renovation, even higher requirements because we know higher flow temperature, 55, 60 degrees or even higher um, to make the ambient inside the building um, convenient. So high requirements from low to a very high temperature at, at a very efficient performance. This is the target. And um, yeah, what is the background, the motivation to do this XL20 project? Um, XL20 R454C. Um, it's an HFO based low GWD refrigerant with GWP 148 below 150. And it's uh, offering a high efficiency performance um, at a high temperature lift. So exactly for this application, for the high challenges. These conditions are especially for air to water heat pumps. And um, there are simple rotary compressors available, which allow a wide um, envelope from less than um, 65 or up to 65 degrees C condensing temperature at um, evaporation of minus 30, um, up to 75 degrees from minus 10 degrees C on, on the low end. So this is exactly the range that is requested for um, heat pump applications for heating the space and also for uh, sanitary hot water preparation. <laughs> if we do this in a proper way, even at extreme temperature lift, um, we can even avoid electrical direct heaters and additionally increase the efficiency. And why? The study um, featured a theoretical, theoretical um, COP comparison and capacity comparison um, versus different refrigerants. And um, yeah, we have commercially available heat pumps. Um, which show up to 15% higher efficiency. And we wanted to understand, yeah, how do they do it? What is the, the theory behind? How we, can we get there? Because we want to help our customers, OEM manufacturers, to get at this um, stage. So first, the product targets define the optimization potential. What is the limit what, where we can get to? to identify the system parameters which we have to turn, we have, which we have to optimize in order to get to the utmost efficiency and capacity and to create a simulation tool that helps us to support OEM customers doing the optimization and um, saving resources, cost and time for the development. The project scope, it was um, issued at an independent uh, research institute in Germany. We took a um, heat pump from, or they took a heat pump from serial production. We made laboratory tests starting with 407C, which is the refrigerant. The system was designed for just to get a reference. 
Then we made a drop in with Sol 54C to have a one to one reference without any change on the system. Then they did um, a change co exchange and compressor, which was dedicated for 454C. In the next step, um, the superheat control was adapted, and the last, last step, um, a modified internal heat exchanger was implemented, which was optimized based on the simulation results. The thermodynamic model was created. Um, it was validated on the test results, and then simulations were done, um, all based on Modelica Daimola environment using the tail suit. Here, just a short picture about the um, heat pump. The system, um, a lot of measurement equipment was added in order to get clear, clear information about um, every point of the system at any time. And with this uh, equipment, then based on this, this is a sketch of the simulation model. This is, looks how the information flow is in the simulation model. Um, just a screenshot based on the test number C. And um, yeah, the simulation results. First, the comparison was on the model accuracy. Here you see in um, strong colors, these are the measured values. And besides, in light colors, the simulated ones. You see they are very much similar. So a confirmation that the simulation model hits um, the real measured uh, system. The same for a calculated value, the uh, COP. Um, so the, the bars are very much similar. Uh, the deviation is very small. That means the accuracy of the model is fine. So now to the test results, just as a summary, improvements from the internal heat exchanger. And um, we need to take into account there was an internal heat exchanger already in the original system. So it's the comparison of the optimized one versus the standard one, which was inside. So just the, the change, the improvement based on the internal heat exchanger. It was in the range of 4 to 7.3%. And all the different bars, um, you can see the legend here at different operating conditions. Uh, source 0, uh, water 55, and source 0, water 35. So standard conditions at different uh, frequency speeds of the compressor. Um, the capacity improvement, similar values, uh, 3.5 to 7.9% just by exchanging the internal exchange. Then uh, regarding the superheat controller, uh, we have improvements between 2.5 and plus 14% and the capacity increased by 2.9 to 18%. Quite nice numbers. Then based on the simulation, as the original system had already an internal heat exchanger inside, by simulation we simulated back to a system which did not include an internal heat exchanger. So uh, calculating back to yeah not non-existing one and um, the outcome was 10 to 21 percent increase in um, COP just by implementing the correct and optimized um, internal heat exchanger. In capacity similar numbers 17 to 29 percent big numbers and uh, so worth to look into it. Um, I would like to summarize the heat pump application results. Um, so the range of improvements I differentiated here between the measurements, pure measurements and measurement um, plus simulation results. So up to 24% in COP just in on measure based on the measurements, 27% in capacity, 39% as a potential including the simulation. So starting from standard refrigeration circuit to the optimized and up to 49% capacity improvement. So if you change from, let's say, 410A to 454C to an optimized system, you can outperform the drop in theoretical capacity and even overcompensate, overcompensate um, the, the drop, which is, if you compare based on repro on the, the thermodynamic properties. So I think it's 
was to look into that uh, double digit improvements with COP and capacity. Um, but finally, I took the effort to look also on the cold and although it has been a heat pump, I said, okay, let's look at the cold end um, that we did not take into account before. What do the test and simulation results tell about this? And I made a similar evaluation. And uh, if you compare the operating conditions at uh, source zero, um, water 35, it's very close to normal cooling, normal temperature cooling. You have uh, evaporation at around zero and um, have an environment 35, um, uh, condensing temperature, this is quite normal. So it's worth to look at this and what is the uh, result for the cold end. So I calculated based on the measured data, the COP, the cooling COP, uh, based on the internal heat exchanger optimized versus um, standard one and the COP improvements on super heat control. Whoops. The numbers are missing, but you see that it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> as well, double digit growth. So 112, 114 to one up above 120, so increase of 20% in COP by super heat control. Um, cooling capacity, similar numbers. Um, yeah, up to 12, 16% in. Uh, based on the internal heat exchanger and based on the super heat control up to 25% increase. So the optimization results summarized as um, in improvements based on measurements. The compressor is quite low, but um, just looking on the two um, optimization standards um, means internal heat exchanger improvement and super heat control so we get to double digit um, improvements here as well. And if we just look at these two, which is internal heat exchanger and super heat control, because we presume that everybody who is building a system will use a compressor dedicated to the refrigerant, um, then it's at still based on the measurements results, based on internal heat exchanger optimization and super heat control, six to 36% in COP and 4 to 42% in cooling capacity. So worth to look into it and also to apply this additional optimization for cooling refrigeration applications. Again, what we learn, the takeaway is the refrigerant circuit has to be designed around a refrigerant according to the refrigerant needs and properties. So we have seen that the improvements um, based on these um, optimizations have quite high double digit um, possibilities. Um, XL20 is a promising refrigerant candidate for residential commercial heat pump applications, especially in renovation buildings where we have the extended requirements regarding temperature lift. And um, even for commercial refrigeration, it's interesting to look into those details and to apply these optimization um, tools. We have this simulation tool on hand. We are prepared to support customers who are interested in developing their system with this product. Um, yeah. And the tool is available. Just challenge us, contact us. We are, will be pleased to support you in developing your system with x 20 So I'm already at the end of my presentation. Thank you. Yeah. The contact data, you, I guess you will be able to download the presentation. You're welcome to contact us after the presentation. Anytime, any question, very welcome. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>